Kia ora koutou. In this video, I'm going to go through part 6b of the 2005 Scholarship Calculus exam. This follows on really closely from 6a, which I've already videoed. You really have to have that question in your head before you get into this one. Okay, so I'm going to quickly sum up where we got to in 6a. Um, but I'd like you to go and watch that video thoroughly. So in 6a, you were given this equation, and you had to show that it represented a hyperbola. And then we did a bit of work with it, and we worked through some stuff with the eccentricity. So we're also going to use this in this video. So very quickly, where we got to with that equation is that it does represent a hyperbola, and it represents the second equation down here. So the general form of a hyperbola is given in equation 1. Right, so equation one is this one, so that's the general form for our hyperbola. But in our situation, once we'd completed the square, we figured out that this was my equation. So it represents a hyperbola, but the centre is not at the origin. The centre is at 2h and h. Also notice that we had a squared, and for b squared we had 2a, all squared. And that's quite helpful for the last part, because it gave me e squared is equal to 1 plus b squared over a squared. So e squared was equal to 1 plus 4a squared over a squared, which is 5. And that gives me a number for e. So e is equal to the positive root of that, which is 5. e, by definition, is above 0. OK, and if you're wondering about the eccentricity stuff, go look at the handout I gave out on Thursday or Saturday, or go and do the Khan Academy work on conic sections. Right, so E measures the kind of stretchiness or squeeziness of my different shapes. All right, so um, when we're working with any conics problems, it's always easier to work with a hyperbola or an ellipse that is centred at the origin. What I've got here is I've drawn out roughly our hyperbola from question 6a, and we can see that it's not centred at the origin, right? So it's got um, two foci, and I've labelled them f1 here and g1 here, and then it's got a point a1 here. Now these three relate to this question in 6b, and you'll see how it works in a minute. Right, so we're given some general setup for a beam of light being aimed at the focus of a hyperbolic reflector, and we're given the standard equation for a hyperbola. So this picture here is for a general hyperbola. So we're working with this case, right? Nothing special. And we're told that um, if we aim a beam of light at this focus here, at point G, so from anywhere, it will get reflected through the focus. And this example shows the case where the light is coming through a specific point, the point A, which is vertically above F. So here's my one of my foci here at F. So F has got coordinates A, A, E, 0, and G has got coordinates negative A, E, 0. So they are my two foci. Right, so this is point A, and the light is being aimed at point G, and then it's going to reflect through here. Right, it's really important that A is vertically above F. That means that we know that the X coordinate is going to be AE, but we don't yet know the Y coordinate. So this is going to be the setup for any hyperbola. And now we're asked to apply it to the hyperbola that we found in 6A, which is this one here. Right, so we've got a similar beam of light aimed at the focus. So here's my picture here. My beam of light is coming um, through here, A to G. Right, and it's going to reflect, oh, it went to a straight line. Cool, and now it's going to be reflected down through here. But you can see that if we have to work with this equation, which is kind of floating with the centre here, all of the algebra is going to be harder. Right, so the easiest way to do this, um, we're asked to find the equation of this line A1, G1, right? So we're going to have to find the equation of this and this. Now, I could go and do some work and find that point. I could find this point and this point. But I'd have to do some transformation work that's, that's a little bit messy. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation, so my hyperbola that's centred out here, and I'm going to shift it all back to being centred at the origin. So the shape of the hyperbola is not going to change, but its location on the, on the graph is going to change. But it gives us a much, much easier equation to be working with. Right? So I'm now going to do the whole thing centred on the origin, 
and I'm going to find the equation. Instead of directly finding the equation of this line, I'm going to find the equation of this line where I'm centered on the origin. Okay, so let's now go through and figure out what do we have to do. Well, the first thing is that we know that those foci are at a, e, and 0, and negative a, e, and 0. But for our equation, for our hyperbola, we had e squared is equal to 5, and e was equal to root 5. So that means that f will be equal to root 5a, 0, and g will be equal to negative root 5a, 0. We can start to put some values onto my picture. So here's my bad drawing, right, centered at the origin. So all just suddenly got much easier to deal with. Here's g, so g is at negative root 5a and 0. And here's f, at root 5a and 0. Here's point a up here. Now, a has got an x-coordinate of 5a because it's vertically above f. But to get the y-coordinate, we're going to use the equation of my hyperbola. So what can I do? Well, we know that we've got x squared over a squared minus y squared over 4a squared is equal to 1. We're going to substitute in root 5a. So root 5a squared over a squared minus y squared over 4a squared is equal to 1. And we get 5a squared over a squared minus y squared over 4a squared equals 1. I'm working slowly here. We get 5. So 5 take away 1 gives me 4. 4 is equal to y squared over 4a squared. Rearranging here. 16a squared is equal to y squared. So y will be equal to plus or minus 4a. Now go back to our graph. We want the top branch, so we're going to have 4a. Down here would be the negative 4a. So this point will be root 5a for the x and 4a for the y. Okay, now all we're asked to do now is to find the line. Well, we're asked to find the line joining a1, g1, but we're going to find the line joining a and g, and then we're going to shift it back. So the line joining a and g is now, we're now down to a much simpler problem. We've got negative root 5a, 0 here, and we've got root 5a um, and 4a here. Okay, so think back to how we find the equation of a line. Well, we're going to use y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. That means I need one point. I'm going to use this one, and I need the gradient. The gradient is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Right, so the change in y here is equal to 4a. And the change in x is one lot of root 5a to here and another lot here. So it's going to be 2 root 5a. That gives me m is equal to 2 on root 5. So, and y1 is 0. We get y minus 0 is equal to 2 on root 5, x minus root 5a. Okay, so that's my x1. So the point that I'm using here, just let me check I'm doing that right, that should be a negative, right? So my point, this is my point, so this is x1, y1, and this is my gradient. Now cleaning that up gives me y is equal to 2 on root 5x plus 2a. Okay, so that's not quite my final answer, but I'm just about there. So the, the line going through AG is this one here, or all the way back on my original graph, we've now find, found, let's see how many colors I can get on one graph. Right, so we've done that. All we've got to do now is to translate it back onto this one here. And that's about 10 seconds of work, especially if I can make my screen move. Okay, so scrolling through here, this is the line through AG. So to go through A1, G1, we must translate AG 
by, I've written this as a vector in short form, right, by the vector 2h and h. The reason for that one more time is that what we've just worked with is the equation centered on the origin. Right, but what we really want to be working with is the equation that we got from 6a, which is translated by 2h units in the x direction, the positive x direction, and h units in the positive y direction. So to go from here to here, we have to translate our straight line by that much. Right, so we're going to take this and just do a couple of last things to it. So we have y equals 2 on root 5x plus 2a, that's ag. And now we're going to have y is equal to 2 on root 5x minus 2h plus 2a plus h. Right, This is my vertical shift up one unit, and this is my horizontal shift across 2h units. So this is the line through a1, g1. And it would be nice to clean that up. So we'll get y is equal to 2 on root 5x minus 4 on root 5h plus 2a plus h. So I'd give that four marks. If you don't like that, you could times through by your root 5s and you could get root 5y is equal to 2x minus 4h plus 2 root 5a plus root 5h. Either of those is fine, and you could do some different different versions. Okay, so that's um, question 6b. I am planning on doing 6c and 6d sometime in the holidays. Um, I think 6c is a really awful question, but some of you guys are, are seeing it much more easily than I am. So go, go ahead and have a look at 6c. It's basically a rearranging one. And then 6d is easier than it looks. Um, but I'll get back to those over the next few days. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if this helped or if you've got any questions.